Hi guys and welcome to a new stage of the Ruby Basics course of Rails Karate. In this new stage we are going to talk about the Ruby Core. Yes, the Ruby Core and all its components and why Ruby is so amazing. So in this first lesson we are going to talk about something called symbols. Symbols in Ruby means optimizations, means flexibility means a lot of things and um, symbols is the reason or, or is one of the reasons why Ruby is so amazing language symbols represent names and strings in the Ruby interpreter symbols are only created once and referred to through the rest of the runtime of the program learn let's learn how to use them and how this can help to the to the optimization of our programs so let's see an example of this I'm going to get into my IOB console and I'm going to create a new hash so let's create a hash called race karate okay so I have here uh, a hash with three keys name email and location with its rex with the respective values so let's create it okay so we have here a hash mm, but let's imagine that if we wanted to create uh, an, another variable let's say it's gonna be called race uh, it's gonna be called race character 2 uh, we'll have the same keys as name email and location but with different values like this I can say hello to on the internet too okay we have the same three keys but with different values in a different variable okay we create it but you should know that each time we want to create a hash for example and we define a key this key is created as a new instance or as a new object string object in the memory same for here so we are creating the same name key two times here now imagine this in the context of a real application we will use or in a real application we will use hundreds and hundreds of hashes so if we are having a memory lag since or maybe or a high consuming of memory defining these keys because they have the same name and they are used for the same identify a value in a hash so this is where symbols come in hand we can use symbols for create these keys and uh, let me show you how it will be okay so here I have the race card hash uh, let's instead of define these keys with as a strings let's define them as a symbols for create a symbol we do it in two ways if we want to to call it or define it or assign some value to I mean or assign it to some variable we add a column and the name and the name it can be any name symbol one for example but if we want to assign some value to the symbol we create it like this symbol one and colon and in the other hand we have the value we want to assign to it so in this case we have the, the name key and colon and race equals to race karate same for this email as a symbol equals to this value and location too location okay here we have three keys and they are with symbols okay 
So we create LIDs and rise in behind scenes shows like this, but don't worry, you just always keep creating them like this. Okay, so if we want now to define the race character to variable, we can do so. Okay, let's imagine the other. Well, uh, no, not imagine. Let's uh, assign them different values. Okay, so now we are creating uh, another variable as a hash, another hash uh, with the same keys. So as we are using symbols, these keys are created only once, but used used in any times we need. So in the in the other uh, example we were creating each key as a new string object each time we create a new variable so now using symbols these symbols are creating once in memory so this symbol is the same in for the root for root for the ruby interpreted memory so we imagine now we have one key called name that can be used in any hash okay so this will help us to improve the performance of our programs and and it's very used when we start to work with Ruby and Braids you will see a lot of this we're gonna use symbols for almost everything because they they are the best the best thing for save memory and for improvement or proof of performance sorry and that's why we use them performance and it's and it looks nice it's much better to have the other syntax using these a row and the strings okay um, these uh, symbols are not only used for uh, as a as a hash keys they are used for a lot of things so let me show you an example how we can use symbols in a practical in a practical instance okay so let's exit from our Ruby console I have created here a core folder and a file called bank underscore account dot rb let's open it and let's retake our our bank account example I'm going to paste here the class I already have it okay so like make, make this smaller and let's explain this class we have a class back account at the null back account class and we have an initialized function we are defining it with a name we receive a name in the in the, in the instance of the object and we define a transactions hash okay so well our transactions array we have here transactions array now we have a deposit and we receive an amount and a hash of options. So in the hash of options we will receive a subject that is the subject of the transactions. If we do not receive any option, uh, I mean any subject, we we make the for default default subject is the default value of the subject key. Then we push or we add to the array of transactions and structured transaction. The structured transactions consists of amount and subject. Okay. So this is like an array of hashes. And each hash will have something like this: amount and subject of the transaction. Okay. So we here we uh, make an instance of the class with the name we make a deposit without subject for see if we get the default subject and then we send a deposit with options this options array that is optional so we send here a subject with this uh, this string so options and the subject in the options hash will be this one and will be assigned I mean will be pushed here with the its amount and the subject okay so 
I want I want you to focus in one part. Okay, first before everything, let's run it. Let's see how it works. Oh, I forgot here. Just for fun, we are going to inspect the the object for see what it has inside. Okay. Great. So I'll make this bigger. Okay. We have here. Let's run it again. We have here the object with name and the transactions array. So as you can see here, we have a transactions array with a hash. The hash, I mean the, the array has two transactions as we did here. We did first the first one and the second one. The first one had the default subject because we didn't send any option in the in the rise of the I mean the hash of options. And we have another transaction with amount and subject here. So you can see how we are structuring the transactions using a hash and symbols. Okay. Also, I want you to notice that once we send the we send the subject in the hash of options here was just we accessed to the we only have to access to the options and subject symbol here and we get the value we sent here as you can see and these using it as hash keys and many other things we all we also can use symbols for name methods we can use symbols for almost everything and you will see how we use them we use them in high level using ruby and rails so far it's just enough this is an introductory use of symbols the next lesson we are going to talk about a very important thing of the of the Ruby code, it's called uh, date and time. So we're going to talk about dates and time in Ruby. Um, if you like this video, don't forget to click the like button just right below this video. And as always, follow me on Twitter as Master Belandia. Follow follow Rizkate. We are on Facebook too. Always keep an eye on Rizkate.com. You will find the transcript of this video and more. And thanks for subscribing to, uh, to our channel. Please subscribe. We need more subscribers for keep creating good content here and making you happy. So don't forget to subscribe. See you next lesson. Bye bye.